Hi, my name is Cherise Harris and I'm an author illustrator from Barbados. Thank you for joining my video, step by step, how I illustrated the picture book, Jerry Changed the Game. So to begin, let's take a look at the book, Jerry Changed the Game, how engineer Jerry Lawson revolutionized video games forever, written by Don Tate. This book is about the story of Jerry Lawson and even though he wasn't the first to think of the idea of a removable video game cartridge, he led a team that uh, became the first to develop it. And it was a major step for um, video games at the time. So to begin uh, illustrating this book, one of the important things for me to do was a lot of research on Jerry Lawson and a lot of research on the game console so that when I drew it, I had a good understanding of what I was drawing. So let's take a look at that drawing process. So here is a bit of my process when I am illustrating a book and specifically for how I illustrated Jerry Changed the Game. I usually start with my rough sketches. These are usually done on computer paper and with just a pencil. I like to use a soft pencil. Um, this is an example of a soft pencil I may use and this is a 10B. And I like to just do really rough sketches and try to get the a sense of of what is happening in the story quickly done on paper. So these are some of the rough sketches that I would have done. After I do the rough sketches, I will scan them and edit them a bit, um, especially if there might be areas I want to erase or if I want to put together the composition so for example this one the composition would have changed a lot um, because when I'm sketching I like to keep the pressure off so I don't um, sometimes I may not worry if it is exactly like how I imagine the composition to be but the focus would be just on capturing the character or the movement and then I would go ahead and refine the idea a bit more in Photoshop. After I have the really rough sketches done, I scan them and I edit them in Photoshop as I said. And then I would um, send them off to the art director then send them back with the changes. Um, after I make changes in Photoshop, the next step for me would be to um, make those changes in Photoshop and then print the sketches. So these are examples of the sketches printed after I have made any changes. But the process that um, I'm doing, which was not always my process, but in the last few years I started using a light box. And so the light box allows me to transfer the sketch, the rough sketch, to my finished paper where I'll do the final art um, easily and quickly. So these would have been printed with that in mind that I'm going to um, draw over them. And again, it may not be exactly the finished composition. I would go into Photoshop and put everything together then. But for this book in particular, I really wanted to get my lines right with um, pencil on paper. And I used the Prismacolor pencil, um, which I have here. This is a very, because I used it a lot, this is very <laughs> short. Um, but this is the pencil that I use and so from, from here with the light box I would then um, transfer the drawing to 
the paper and part of the reason I used this textured paper was so that um, with the prism color I could get hair texture and I could get the right type of line work that I wanted and because the characters in the book are, are black it was very important um, for me to capture their hair texture very well so that's what you can see in a lot of these uh, drawings so very quickly let me just show you a bit of what I was just explaining about my process here is the rough sketch and after the rough sketch then we have the printed drawing and I'll turn on the light box so you can see from the printed drawing I then draw over that onto my final paper and here you can see how it looks as a finished illustration in the book um, this black and white drawing would then be scanned and colored in Photoshop so let's go on and move into showing you a bit of a demonstration on how I would create the illustrations. I start by cutting out my paper to the size that I want. I think for this it was about um, 10 by 11 inches maybe. And here we'll see a setup on the light box and tape everything down so it's secure because we don't want it shifting while we're drawing and then I will get get started and you can see a bit about how I would have drawn um, Jerry and that was actually a big part of illustrating a picture book biography I had to really get an understanding of how Jerry looked so that I can uh, I could adjust it for the book for my illustrations and so that took a lot of reference images and I had to make a few decisions of both using reference but then also how I would imagine Jerry um, growing from a child to an adult and I didn't have any reference images from when he was a child so that took a bit of imagination one of the things that I, I used to um, show Jerry as a child to an adult was his hairstyle. From the reference images I realized uh, that Jerry kept a part in his hair um, and I was able to use that part throughout uh, the illustrations of Jerry from child to an adult. And I had a lot of fun uh, drawing Jerry's hair as well with that part. So as you can see, I am drawing um, and I really like when the pencil gets nice, soft, thick lines and I really had fun shading in his hair as well. So for the final art for the book, I really wanted it to feel fun and so I included some speech bubbles you'll see I'll draw one here soon and I also included in the final art textures and colors that just reflected the video game art at the time uh, and I, I wanted the final art to in the book to really be exciting and, and fun to go through and that those were ideas that would have been discussed with my art director as well, uh, Laurent, and it's such a collaborative process working with uh, the art director and also input from the author Dawn as well. And through that collaboration, it's great to get feedback on what you're doing and you know you're going in the right direction. And it just becomes a really fun process. After the drawing process, I take it over to my computer table and this is where I scan the drawing and then this is where I would work in Photoshop using my Cintiq and my pen. So for the purposes of this video, I did a screen record of myself coloring in um, the 
illustration that would have been scanned. This is the original art um, that I already had scanned and I'll just color it again to show you a bit about my process in Photoshop. I have the colors here selected already. Uh, I would have saved all my swatches from when I was working on the Jerry book. And so I'm able to pull back those colors easily in Photoshop. I also saved the brushes that I would have used. And for this book, this was the first time I experimented with paper textures. So I really loved the look of the texture of the paper because it reminded me of when I worked traditionally. And so I really wanted to bring that look to, uh, to the book. And as I mentioned before, I was also looking at a lot of the video game artwork at the time. And I really wanted to capture a little of that uh, in the illustrations. So along with using the color, I also used a lot of um, textured uh, brushes as well, half tone brushes, and I had a lot of fun um, creating those looks with the shadows um, as well. There you have it, a bit of insight about my process creating the illustrations for the picture book Jerry Changed the Game. Thank you so much for watching my video and I really hope you enjoyed seeing a bit of the behind the scenes and I hope you'll go out and get your own copy of Jerry Changed the Game when it comes out August 29th, 2023.